Our first caller is Abby from Florida. Abby, how's it going? How can we help you? Hi. Um, so just to give you some background, I'm a 5'5 female, currently around 98 pounds, and the last time I checked, I was about 8% body fat. Whoa. Currently, I have a workout program from a trainer three times a week, and my split for these four weeks at the moment is one upper, one lower, and one full body day. And right now, I usually get about 20,000 to 30,000 steps each day. And on the other four days, I don't work out with my trainer. I'll run or walk on average anywhere from 10 to 13 miles and sometimes throw in another full body day on my own on the weekend. Steady state cardio helps me with my anxiety, but I tend to push myself too hard and some days end up running a half marathon just because I want to see if I can. I'm eating around 1,900 calories a day with 120 grams of protein, and the rest usually breaks down to about 50 fat and around 250 carb, and I take one or two untracked meals a week. I'm a recent college graduate and I'm applying to medical school for fall of 2022. So for the gap year, I'm starting a part-time job next week as an Anytime Fitness membership experience manager. And on top of that, I also volunteer at the hospital. I know all this exercise isn't sustainable, especially when, when I'm going to be start working over 30 hours a week starting next week, but I don't really know where to go from here. I recently just finished playing Division II college soccer, and I'm not sure how to train for lifestyle instead of performance, and I'm scared of suddenly gaining a lot of fat from drastically reducing my cardio all at once. I was advised by the trainers at school that my body fat's at an unhealthy level, and my cycle's often irregular. I just want to look and feel good and be strong and not ruin my metabolism, but I don't really know how to achieve that. So my question to you is how do I transition away from so much cardio and implement a more sustainable workout plan slash how should I adjust my macros to reflect less activity? Yeah, no, first I off. Have a great woo! personality yeah. and I also like long walks at the beach. Yeah. <laughs> I, I do. <laughs> I just hey, want to add that too. They, first off, thank you so much uh, for calling in, asking us a question like this. So can I ask you some, some personal questions if you don't mind? Yeah, sure. Okay. Do you, um, have you ever dealt with any eating issues, orthorexia or anything or anything else? Or would you say that you might have a tendency towards that? No, definitely. I like grew up eating really healthy because my mom's a personal trainer too. So I think when I came to college, I was like so scared of gaining that freshman 15 that like, I was like, I'm only going to eat super healthy. And like, I know like probably the first two years of college, like I was like really restrictive and I think I've gotten a little bit better about that, but yeah, definitely tendency towards orthorexia. Okay. Yeah. So, and you're also a medical uh, school student and in my experience, people who uh, tend to be high achievers um, tend to self-medicate when they're stressed out with more work and more accomplishment. So some people turn to drugs, other people turn to alcohol. Overachievers tend to turn to, uh, you know, challenges, physical challenges, or more studying, or more volunteering. Would you consider yourself somebody that would fit in the type A personality type category? Yeah, a hundred percent. Okay. So I'm going to give you some advice. What I think you should do, and then I'll answer your question. So this is totally. Okay. You could take my advice. It's totally up to you. Again, I, I do want to thank you for calling in because um, you know putting yourself out there is a real tough thing to do. So your body fat is too low. Um, it's too low for a female. You're, you're, if you haven't already caused yourself hormonal issues, you, well, you she already is. She's already had ir irregular months already with her period. Yeah. So you're, 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 then you're causing yourself some issues. Now, a lot of these can be long lasting. You can also cause yourself bone mineral issues. Um, uh, you can cause metabolism issues, other health issues, but I, I don't think you should focus on, those things or running away from those things because if anything those are going to drive you in the same direction that you're currently going so what i'm going to recommend is this i'm going to recommend that you uh don't observe body fat don't observe weight i would definitely take away any type of intense exercise um strength training is perfectly fine three days a week perfectly fine getting getting stronger it's actually great focus on getting stronger and I would recommend that you focus on how you feel and also being with your feelings. Um, sometimes people have anxiety or stress, and rather than sitting with those feelings, they tend to distract themselves with, with lots of activity and lots of different things. You're doing a lot. You're doing more than, than three people should be able to do 
just for yourself. Well, and would... you're probably going to crash and burn if you haven't already. So I would scale everything way back. Three days a week of resistance training. Don't weigh yourself because here's what's going to happen. You're going to gain muscle. You're going to gain body fat. You should gain body fat. As a female, your body fat should at least be twice as high as it is now. So you said 8%. You should be at least 16 is really lean. You should be at least 16%. And so your weight's going to go up. And it's going to freak you out when you weigh yourself and you see that. So avoid the scale. Avoid those things. And then if you really want to take it a step further... I really recommend that you work with uh, a therapist who's worked with situations like this once a week or even twice a month and just give them feedback. Hey, here's what I'm doing. Here's my nutrition. What do you think? And dig a little deeper. And I promise you it'll get harder before it gets better. But when it gets better, you'll find this balance with exercise and nutrition and you'll develop a new relationship with it. Because right now the relationship you have with it, although it's taking you away from certain things, it's a stressful one. And that is definitely not sustainable. I think you've identified that the, the not sustainable part. So that's my advice. Now, to answer what you said, I would slowly just scale things. If you don't want to go that far, just, just eliminate the running. Just start with that. Just cut the running out and keep everything else and increase your calories by at least 600 calories a day. That's that's where I would start if you just want to start slowly. Are you going to leave anything for Justin and I? No, no. he wanted Sorry. to <laughs> I went crazy. I'm going to eat the whole burrito here. Yeah. Yeah. I, hope, I hope your one-on-one -on -one session with Sal went well. Yeah. yeah. So... <laughs> If you were if you were my client, the the first thing that I would actually say to you is I'd ask you what you're running from. Um, if I have a client that's training this much, working that much, got this much on their plate, that in this crazy of lean shape already, and is still pushing, um, I would I'd want to dig in. I'd want to find out what it is that you're distracting yourself from that it causes you to do this much exercise. You're already in obviously beyond physical as far as the as far as ape or body fat percentage wise in incredible shape that's also the the good side of this the good side is um you're in a you're in a an, an easier place to help somebody physically uh the mentally getting through all those hurdles and getting to the bottom of what sal was alluding to uh, that's probably going to be the biggest cha challenge of all this I mean, simply allowing yourself to have a few hundred more calories and cutting out all the running and, uh, and extra activity uh, should be uh, easy. It's less work, less effort you need to put forth. But my concern as a coach, or if you were my client, would be mentally being able to get through that. Something has got us here, right? Yeah, I think that's really it's it. Most of the challenge here is is the mental side to this is to be able to shift that over into you know performing as well as you're performing and everything else with the recovery and uh, you know focusing more on what's going to actually restore your body to keep you going. So to to be able to kind of look at how you can increase that within your schedule by eliminating you know some of these things that uh, you know you're overdoing quite a bit. Uh, will actually help to improve all other uh, avenues of, of what you have yourself uh, involved in. As something more specific as far as training too, is if you're not, I don't know what the split looks like that you're running, but I would definitely run a, you know, MAPS phase one, MAPS anabolic type of a program. I mean, and, and, and or something like uh, MAPS powerlift, something where you're focused on getting strong, you're focused on the weights that you're moving, you're not thinking about the scale, you're not getting hung up on uh, your body image, you're, you're not paying attention to that stuff. It's really just about getting in there, training three days a week, trying to get stronger inside the gym. Uh, that's what I would do as far as my lifting protocol. Yeah, you know what, Abby? I'll, I'll give you something else too because one of the hardest things to do when you're using something as a distraction or you're medicating with something, in your case it may be exercise, is to just take it away because now it's gone. So now what do I do, right? Sometimes it's easier to replace it with something that is uh, better for you before you eliminate everything completely. Mm -hmm. May I recommend uh, yin yoga or meditation? So on those days that you normally take an hour to run or to do lots of activity, now you're not going to do power yoga you're not going to do hot yoga. No payo. You're going to do the, <laughs> the slow yin yoga. It's she very it. slow. You're holding positions. You're focusing on your breath. Uh, or meditation. Sign up for a meditation class. Don't do it on your own. It's going to be really hard to do on your own. Meditation is not easy. Uh, but sign up and take a course or do a class. Those would be the two things I would say that can replace what you're currently doing. That might be an easier step than just cutting 
you know, things out. Just just out of curiosity, too, how are you getting twenty to 30,000 steps on a non-running day? How What's that? Where's that coming from? I walk a lot because oh, wow. I live in Florida and it's nice out every day. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Okay. Do you have MAPS You're Anabolic? You're super productive. Yeah. Do you have MAPS Anabolic, by the way? No, I don't. All right, we're going to send that to you. And then I'm, you know what I'm also going to do? I'm going to send you the intuitive nutrition guide because okay. in the intuitive nutrition guide, there's a lot of talk about developing a better relationship with food. And I think that might benefit you. Now, I want you to be, you know, I want, I want to be very clear. This is not going to be easy. It's not going to be easy because you're, the direction that you want to move, although logically and cognitively, I think you know that's the direction you need to go. But making that change is going to be very challenging. You're going to have to take a bit of a leap of faith in order to do it. And you're going to have to be okay with gaining weight. Although you know logically 8% is too lean and your body weight is too low, that still doesn't mean that you're going to be okay with gaining weight. So that's why I said get rid of the scale and avoid even paying attention to it for a little while because- Focus uh, on strength. Yeah, because it's going to be really hard to see the scale go up even five pounds. You're going to want to reverse that. Okay. Thank you all, all right. so much. <laughs> no, no problem, Abby. Thanks for calling in. Thank you, Abby. Thank you. Ooh, that's a tough one. Mm. That is really hard, especially at that age, at a college. Her mom was a trainer. Yeah. She's surrounded by it, and it's uh, that's how how many times have we seen that kind of relationship? Oh, with exercise I've, I've seen that mm-hmm. a lot, and that's why my first thing back, if she was my client, would just be to be very direct. And what is it? What else is going on that we are trying to avoid thinking about that, that you need to do 30,000 steps on what you would consider an off day, and then on days when you're running, you're doing 10 to 13 miles, and then on the other and A days, marathon when you feel like it, or half marathon. Yeah, and then on top of that, getting ready for, ready for med school and working. I mean, that's just obviously trying to stay distracted. I have no idea what from, but that's- that's where the real thing, it's so funny, we're talking about she wants to know about macros and, and food and what my exercise program, but the truth is it has nothing to do with that. Yeah, There's something else going on that the that's what you have to get to the bottom of. You get to the bottom of that and those other things fall into place. If you get hung up on, and even our advice, macros, focus on strength, you know, cut back, like still that's the wrong focus. I mean, maybe it's better direction than the current direction she's going. But the real answer lies in figuring out what is it that you're trying to avoid thinking about. Yeah. Well, she's killing it on on a lot of different levels, but it's just too much. Like it, like the sustainability and uh, longevity uh, for all these different activities and pursuits. It's just you know it's going to hit to a heading point, uh, which it already is. Oh so. yeah, it damages your your organs. You start to see osteopenia in young women, especially in 98 pounds at five five eight percent body fat. You'll start to see that. Obviously, hormones. Uh, are going to be thrall. But here's the here's the the light of that. The good side of that is she obviously has the ability to focus and be uh you know ambitious. Right. And so if she can f- figure this out, yeah, discipline won't be the problem. Oh yeah, yeah if yeah. she could figure this out, she's got a lot of success ahead of her. If she doesn't, it's going to be very very I find it interesting she's got a a, a train she's got a trainer for a mom. Her mom's yeah. a trainer. I wonder how long. We should have asked how long that was. Kind of I wonder and uh this is totally speculating, it could be totally wrong right here, right? But you know, I could see uh, a, a kid, uh, like I could see my kid being this way if maybe my son was born when I was like in my early 20s and I was infatuated with, you know, building a body and it was all about body fat percentage. Totally. And I was constantly looking at image of myself and like I always per- had this, you know, imagine being a young kid who you see, you look up to mom and dad so much and this is what you see is what they focus on is like mm. the-, the I, I used to train a psychologist mm-hmm. who said that because we talked about this about children developing uh, eating issues and you know body image issues, and she said, "Now there's the obvious causes where the parent says something to the kid, don't eat that, you'll get fat." Or, right. but she said, "What's more common is not that. It's not that the parent says something to the kid. It's how the parent talks about themselves. Yeah, mm. like, oh, I can't eat that, honey. I'm going to get fat. Or, oh, right. I don't look good in this bikini. And then the daughter or the son hears yeah, mom or dad, yeah. yeah, say that about themselves, right. and then they internalize it." 